tonight, live from the Inspire Theater on the corner of Las Vegas Boulevard and Fremont Street in the heart of fabulous downtown Las Vegas, we present the Downtown Podcast, starring Dylan Jorgensen, also featuring Rose Donahue and Jay Frank. Tonight's guest, CEO of Current Initiatives, Jason Sowell. Film director, Joe Lujan. Music by Awesome Possum. And And now, ladies and gentlemen, let's give it up for the man who's anxious to release his tax returns, Mr. Jay Frank. What's up? How y'all doing tonight? Y'all good? Good looking crowd tonight. I like this. Y'all loud? Shit, goddamn, I like this. Free? You can't beat free, right? Goddamn. Shit. Like everything in here is a beautiful vibe in here. I like it, man. Hey, uh, I need to talk about something. Um, I'm trying to accept the fact that I'm cheap. Look, <laughs> look, <laughs> don't judge me. I'm being honest. I got to accept the fact that I'm cheap. I notice I'm the type of guy that's got $20 to go to the club, but I don't got $20 to drink. Look, I don't care what you say, it's real. Like, I don't got $20 for no Crown and Coke like this. Nah, not in my pocket. I'm a pregame before I come to the club. I'm not doing it. I'm going to be in the club with my lady, and if I'm in the club with you and I see somebody behind me and they straw dangling like this, I'm going to be like, mm, this, I swear to God. I don't care what you call it. I don't care what you call it. You call it sippy cup free drink all you want. I don't care. That's what I'm doing. I'm cheap. I don't got time. I, I just accept that. I just accept it, man, for real. Like, another thing. I don't like spending money on gas because I don't like trying to spend money on gas. Like, come on. I don't want to do that. Gas was like 250 last week. I'm not going nowhere. My boy called me. He was like, hey, Jay, let's go to the gym. And I'm like, I ain't going to no gym. Not for 250. I'm not going nowhere. <laughs> I said, you know what? I'm gonna stay home. I'm gonna do a sit up and I'll call you later. He was like, you know what, man? I'm proud of you, man. That's motivation. I said, it is because there's a Fresh Prince of Marathon that runs all night and someone got to sit up to turn the TV on and make the popcorn and it's not gonna make itself. The TV show ain't coming on by itself. I don't care what you say. Man. Look, one more thing too, right? This is how cheap I am. I went to church last Wednesday, right, for Bible study. Don't judge me, because you're already laughing. Look, I went to church last Wednesday for Bible study, right? And I only had a dollar in my pocket, and I already had that guilty conscience when the offering bucket came around, right? So the offering bucket comes around down the aisle one time, I put a dollar in there. Offering bucket came around the second time, I took a dollar out. Look, I don't care what y'all say. I don't care what you say. I was broke, and God knows my heart. Like I said, my offering bucket came around the first time. Second time, I took a dollar out. I thought that was God giving me my blessing back. I don't care what you say. I don't care what you say. I'm Jay Frank, y'all. And I'm going to give it up, man. Are you constantly on the go with no time to prepare fresh, delicious meals? You've been meaning to meal prep, haven't you? Well, let Pollock Meal Prep do the cooking for you. Pollock Meal Prep is the newest Las Vegas-based meal prep service. No matter what your busy is, and I know we get busy, Pollock has you covered. We prep for those who work out, busy moms who want to eat better in their families, and people who just want better ingredients in their bodies. After all, you are what you eat. So what's your busy? Please visit us at www.potluckmealprep.com and follow us on Facebook and Instagram to see what's cooking today. I created Potluck to help people be able to sit back and live. I strive to create fresh, delicious meals that you can enjoy on the go, in the office or at home, but always at your convenience. And as always, my meals offer healthier alternatives to pork and beef, so every meal for me is eating for a better life. So what's your busy? Log on to www.potluckmealprep.com and follow us on Instagram and Facebook to see what's cooking today. That's awesome. Oh, you guys are going to... Awesome. Great energy. No, enough, enough, enough. All right, all right, all right. I know, it's exciting. 
You will love our next guest. He was recently featured in People Magazine for his work with The Laundry Project. He is the founder of a nonprofit called Current Initiatives. Everyone, put your hands together for Jason Sowell. Come on out. Yes. Man, you had it riled up. Hey, this is a laundry, this is a laundry crowd. And that was the Thanks key the whole time. They love laundry. Yeah. That's uh, the secret. That's I the hate, secret to the audience. Honestly, I hate laundry. Oh, well, it seems like I you love it. So I want to hear about it. Tell me what is the Laundry Project. Yeah. Uh, so the Laundry Project, basically what we do is take over laundromats and turn them into community centers. And we provide free laundry services for low-income families that are financially struggling. A lot of families in our, in our country uh, legitimately every day make a choice of whether they're going to put food on the table or they're going to wash their clothes. And food always wins out because they don't want to die. So uh, this is they, the point, yeah, yeah. So Looking they good uh, on the corpse. laundry laundry goes uh, sometimes months without being washed. A lot of okay. as a result, a lot of kids because because that's interesting clothes. juxtaposed. You say you don't like doing laundry, but yet you created the laundry project. So this was one of those yeah. things you were like, man, I hate this, and I know everyone else hates gonna this. Gonna take it head on. Yeah. I am yeah, I'm gonna <laughs> take this on, and we're gonna solve that problem. Yeah. Uh, well, so you know, because you have done this laundry project, I thought it would be a good idea for me to bring my laundry to the show tonight. Sure. Yeah. Because yeah, I would love I would love yeah. some help putting it together. Yeah. Do you mind bringing out? It's so it's all clean. It's all clean. Give it up. Yeah. Splash, you know, I was taking a bath. Thanks. I thought just I, during the interview we could work through this. Yeah, you know. Yeah, sure. Real quick though, I don't. Just to clarify, I don't actually do the laundry. They do it themselves. I just pay for it. Oh yeah, clarified. Yeah. But so. you, you wouldn't mind helping me, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sure. This is yeah. kind of it. Yeah. I'll tell you what to do. Uh, no, you would grab oh, some and then some? yeah, you get you, you fold right here while we chat. Only if your underwear's in here though. That's all. That's uh, all. I want. Who knows? Uh, yeah, I just throw it in the bin when it gets dirty, you know, and then we <laughs> clean it out. Those are reversible too. I like the fun side out. Who <laughs> <It> matters? <laughs> They really are. Have you ever seen me in those Who shorts? Doesn't? You doesn't jump in the bathroom when you're having a bad day and you switch it up. Yeah. Okay, so. Uh, do you want me to do your laundry? Do you want me to yeah, right, as absolutely. a nonprofit, could you this explain helping, what that means? Yeah, uh, dignity. I think uh, business a lot of times, especially, gets uh, it has a bad rap because it is all about making money a lot of times. But uh, I believe business should be more than that. I think business should have a purpose, it should create value. It should just be about the product or the money that we're making. It should be about bringing dignity and empowerment to the customers uh, that, uh, that use that business. Okay, and how are you guys trying to create dignity in your nonprofit for the customers? Yeah, so uh, laundry is one of those things, and empowering families, uh, kids going to school. What in the world? I don't know. I just That's say, not laundry. You don't. You got to wash these things. That's do not, they smell? You know? Yeah. I, I mean, much I'd, much better. Yeah. I've never seen somebody put that in the in their washing machine though. Yeah. So, I mean, so, I've seen some crazy stuff. This. Oh, that was from EDC. This right here. Yeah, I mean that was. That's yeah. true. <laughs> That's a, uh, it's a flag you can a, wear. It's a flag with a hood. There's it's, it's yeah, it's a spirit like flag, a, that's right. It's kind of like one of those towels with a hood. <laughs> that was actually another downtown <laughs> entrepreneur who built those. Very nice. Um, okay, so you have a phrase that you like to use in your business, which is the three L's. Love, learn, and lead, yes. right? Maybe yeah. you say them in a different order. I think that's how that. But tell me, uh, tell me about why you use that. Uh, because I'm, well, for one, I'm big on, on learning. I think we should learn people's stories. I think we should learn uh, about the world that we're in, the culture that we live in, the culture that people that, that need help. Uh, we should constantly be learning. Once we stop learning, we start dying. And I think learning is... Oh, man. Yeah. Sorry. No, I don't want to die. Yeah, just, you, just keep on learning, just keep man. Learning. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Give me some more of that calculus, uh, you know. <laughs> Send it over. Uh, and love, I think, is a, I think love is a misconstrued thing. We, uh, we talk about love in, in very random ways. Like, we'll say we love the person that we're married to, but we'll also say that we love the new car that we got, which is an interesting proposition to me because we don't really sell our spouses. Oh, that's when we're interesting. Done with them. Yeah. Uh, so, but do you, do you, but it, sometimes it's in the tone. Do you specify, like, like, oh, yeah, I love you, go, you I baby, love you know, that versus car. like, More so. yeah, I love that car, yeah. yeah. Uh, it usually goes the other way around. Maybe the car? Like, hey, yeah, I love my wife. <laughs> Depends on how long you've been married I for, I love yeah. that car, yeah. Uh, <laughs> but no, love, love requires action. It's not just an emotion that we feel. Love requires that we do something and that we do something to act on that love and make a choice to help other people. Yeah, give it up. I like that. That's a good answer. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> okay, so... Um, 
as a as a nonprofit uh, entrepreneur, you described yourself as a hope dealer. Um, but yeah, had, I like to deal hope. Yeah, it was very interesting. It sounds like a drug dealer. Why do you call yourself a hope yeah. dealer? Yeah, because I think hope is a drug. You can get addicted to it. I think so. And yeah. we should get addicted to it. I think it's the one drug we should be addicted to. And you guys are giving the first one free. Yeah. At the uh, thing. <laughs> keep hope alive. Addicted to love. <laughs> I like that. Okay. Um, you also said that people need to stop By trying way, to change all, the world. This, what is this? Uh, it's a glow in the dark tie. Yeah, that's from EDC <laughs> too. We live in Vegas, man. It's, right. not, it's not so easy. <laughs> you got to have these kind of things just to fit in. It's my pocket square from, from Derek at Dapper Industries. Um, yeah, yeah it's good. I think you got him in there. Yep. Yep. That These must have came. That must have came from someone. Sometimes it's a shared laundry mat. Not everybody <laughs> can find everything every time. At least you go high quality with the Victoria's Secret. You know, I. Um, but you said people should stop trying to change the world. Why? Uh, because the world is too big for any one of us to change. And I think we should focus more on the person, the life that's right in front of us that we can help, that we can empower. And if every one of us did that, instead of ignoring the people in front of us, looking at the big picture, eventually the world would change. Yeah, I actually, I, I agree with that a lot. That's when a thousand people or 10,000 people have something happen to them, it's like a statistic. But when one little girl is starving, yeah, so does it work in reverse, like, you know, love for one person being a yeah, bigger impact? Yeah, absolutely. I think um, in, this, in the same way that if you give money to an organization that's uh, major around the world, they're doing things around, around the world, you don't necessarily see direct impact of that. But if you're standing, for example, on a laundromat and you're putting quarters in a machine for someone, you're looking that person in the face, you're hearing their story, that sticks with you. Uh, yeah. Way longer than seeing a commercial. Or something I on bet, the other yeah. Side of the world. Yeah, that's true. Give it up for him. Um, yeah. I bet. Do you, have, do you have a? Do you? Can you walk me through a story of a time when you like put the money in and then you started chatting with the person who yeah. you were helping? Uh, I, one of my favorite stories probably will forever be when we first started in 2008. A uh, single dad that uh, was driving by. He saw a sign out there, and he was actually on his way to go fishing with yeah. a neighbor, and that was going to be some food for the week. And he oh. sees the sign of free laundry, tells his friend to take him back home, gets his, gets his two boys' laundry, brings it to the laundromat. And as we're doing his, helping with the laundry, he tells us about it. He's been fighting with his kids all week to go to school because they were embarrassed to go to school because they didn't have clean clothes to wear. And he couldn't afford to wash them. And then when he saw that sign there, uh, that was his way to be able to send his kids to school not yeah. being embarrassed. So yeah, just that little dignity. thing. You change his life. Give it up. That's so awesome. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. That really is. That's cool. That's it. You know, the world's, world's better now that you're in it. I like that. Thanks. All right. Well, Jason, thank you so much for coming and chatting with people. Um, if you guys want to learn me. more about the nonprofit, you can at engagecurrent.org. Absolutely. And then maybe you can throw out some Twitter handles. Anything else people should do? Yeah, at Engage Current. Um, take, you know, go there and use your credit card. Pay some money. Donate some money. <laughs> that's, what, that's what everyone should do. There it goes. And All right. Volunteer. All right. Give it up for him. Jason, thank you so much for coming Absolutely. out. Much appreciated. Jason Sodwell, thank you. All right. And for you people at home, you're going to want to stay through this commercial because we're going to come back with Rose Donahue, and she's playing a brand new game called I Can Die Better Than You. guest was not allowed to watch scary movies as a child, except when his grandmother came over to babysit and he could watch them secretly. Now he's grown up and he directs artistic horror films and loves to terrify his audience. Please welcome Joe Lujan. Hi. How old were you when your grandmother let you watch these scary movies? Around five, six years old. Oh my God, that's way Sorry, younger than I expected. Sorry, she's probably going to be like, you're going to get it after this. <laughs> <laughs> that's yeah. crazy. I didn't watch scary movies like, at all. I still don't watch scary movies. Yeah, no, so. my parents tried to keep me from watching, but um, my grandmother and my older sister, actually, them two were the ones who were like, They were like, yeah, we're doing here. it. Just don't say anything. I'm like, okay. When did your parents find out? Like when I was... 10 or 11. 10 or 11? Yeah. So you got away like six years 
Yeah. What? <laughs> yeah. That's cool, huh? Yeah. That's pretty good. Yeah. You, yeah what was so. your grandmother like? She must she's, have been pretty oh, cool. She, she's awesome. Yeah. She loves everything. The Exorcist is the number one to her. What was the scariest movie for you? Like, do you have one that you're just still freaked out by? Um, there's quite a bit. Um, but I think The Exorcist is probably the one that I can't. Just can't watch it. I can't. Has it's it It's very uncomfortable. It has, yeah, uh-huh. it has. I have a script that I wrote a couple years back for it and haven't really had the courage to Ooh. dab into it just yet. But soon, soon I will. Okay, yeah. we have something to look forward to. <laughs> yes, yes, we do. Well, we also have a lot of the work you have done to look forward to, isn't that right? Yeah, yeah. You have a we lot have coming up. Lots, yeah, and they're all um, hardcore. Hardcore. Torture, screaming. So if you guys like horror, get ready. Uh, we have Rust. That is a feature. My first feature I shot here in Vegas. Um, that's like Texas Chainsaw Massacre. And we actually shot inside um, a local haunted house. The entire film was shot inside um, Hotel Fear and Asylum. So I didn't know we had haunted houses in Vegas. Yeah. We do. Y- you have to try it. <laughs> You're just like, you yeah, we do. Yes, <laughs> we do. <laughs> yeah, we, we do. do. Okay. Yeah, so we have those. And that those films, both part one and two, will be released on Halloween for one night only for, for everyone to see for free. No way. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, so yeah, we're, we're really excited for that. that. Um, we are, we're going to be launching that on the official Carcass Studios website, which launches October 1st. Cool. So people should check out Carcass Studios. CarcassStudios.com, and, and you'll be able to see the film, both films. Yeah. Okay. As well as trailers um, for my other films, Atelophobia. Right. Atelophobia is probably the most gruesome film I've done. Uh, it's like Mean Girls meets Saw. So it's like Ooh. lots of screaming and blood and torture. So there's some physical trauma and some emotional trauma and just put it all together. Yes. Artistically, (laughs) artistically putting it out there for everyone to see. It's very different. Cool. How do you make the mean girls thing happen? What is it in the story? Um, It has to do with uh, pageant queens. They're all being mean towards each other. And one girl who just snaps ends up mm, either they kill themselves or yeah. I don't want to give too much away, oh, but because then I'll give, a lot, I'll give away the whole story. Yeah, no, no, no. We, have some, we need something to look, keep looking forward yeah, to. So. Totally. So when we, were spoke, we were speaking earlier, and you said that your lead character is generally a female. Yeah, it is. It's, yeah, I think every, you normally see male actors always leading. Uh-huh. It's kind of, to me, I'm like, it's kind of outplayed. I'm just like, I want to see some girls kicking ass. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so that's why every film I kind of write a lead female. Mm-hmm. There is a supporting lead male, but they're quick to die right away. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> right. usually, you know, you, you see the guys always overcoming, uh, you know, the story. Uh-huh. It's like now after the girls actually go through hell, right? right. They survive at the end. So nice. <laughs> <That's>, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah, Amazing. What's it like writing a female character? Is it different? Do you prefer, um, like, why do you prefer it, would you say? I don't know. I think it's more of an artistic outlet when mm-hmm. I do it. You know, I'm writing and I don't know, like, everyone has that, that vision that men, seeing weak men is kind of like, oh, that's not good, you know. That, that kind of throws the whole feel of the movie off, you know. Mm-hmm. But I feel like if you see a girl who everyone thinks is going to be weak but then overcomes being this badass. Right. It's like you kind of show everyone, like, you see, women can do it, too. So, yeah. yeah. Duh. Cool. So, Where do you usually find your female leads? Um, I'm actually casting all in Vegas right now. Entirely in Entirely Vegas. Entirely in Vegas, yeah. 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 Entire That's cast. Very cool. Cast, crew, everyone is part of Vegas. I want to keep the whole community together. Yeah, so we have that. And then my other film, which is my latest one, I should have brought this up earlier, is The Immortal Wars. Mm. Yeah. (laughs) And that actually has Eric Roberts and Tom Sizemore and Bill Oberst Jr. Um, They're playing some big roles in that film. And that is the first time I strayed away from horror, actually. It's an action sci-fi film. So, yeah. Very cool. Yeah, so we're really excited. It's like yeah. Mortal Kombat meets Hunger Games. Okay. Yeah. Okay. What so. do you think made that shift for you? Push that shift. Um, I wanted. I don't know. I, I wanted to try. I wanted to challenge myself. Yeah. You know, it's like, I'm so. I feel so comfortable with horror. It's like, mm-hmm. it's. I feel at home. Yeah. So, 
they were like, why don't you try drama? And I was like, no, I'm not gonna <laughs> They're like, what about comedy? And I was like, I'm not even going to answer that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to do that. Um, and then they All said right. action. I was like, yeah, yeah let's, let's have some, All right, some cool. action. Uh, so there's a lot of creative people in the audience. There's a lot of creative people in Las <laughs> Vegas and a lot of viewers at home. What is it that you do to keep pushing yourself creatively? So you've moved into the sci-fi actions. What are other things that you actively um, think about to push yourself? To push myself, I always want to, I'm always told by my producers, you sometimes overthink certain things. You want to extend your hand a little bit too far. You know, I'm just like, what's holding me back? If I could do it, might as well do it. Yeah. Um, so when it comes to action with the Immortal Wars, there were certain scenes that everyone was like, how are you going to shoot that here in Vegas? So there's like, no way you can shoot that. And I'm just like, I will make it. And I, will, I went to go make my own set. And we shot it. So it's like, when I think of a story. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah when, I think, when I think of a story and think of where I want to go forth with like my career or whatever projects I'm working on, I'm trying to overcome what I did the last time. You know, so like I'm now starting production on a Telephobia 3 in December. Mm -hmm. That the script, I mean, my producer was like, well, where did you come up with this idea? Like, this is gonna make people very uncomfortable. And I was like, that's the point. That's, that's what I wanna do. The, the mission is not to impress, it's to depress. I wanna make you guys feel uncomfortable. <laughs> so I wanna intensify it a bit more. Yeah, well, your commercials did the trick for me, <laughs> but uh, yeah. I'll keep that in mind going into it. We have a game inspired by your intense work. Okay. <laughs> And I have a feud with a fellow podcast member. Okay. He and I have been auditioning for a number of roles in the past uh, couple, couple years. And he always gets them. Oh. oh. No. Oh. I know. Thank you. It's not cool. Yeah, it's not cool. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> the game is called I Can Die Better. So, Joey, why don't you come on out? This is my yeah! nemesis. <laughs> mm -mm. Let me know. What okay, am I doing? Okay, so we uh, asked the audience for some final words. And for you, Rose, the audience picked I, Poppy. Whoa! I, Poppy. Ready, <laughs> I'm ready. Your, your cause of death <laughs> is a stub toe. Okay, keep walking. Oh, my God! Oh, no! All right, you can't bear the pain. The pain's really no, bad. No, I can't bear the pain. I can't bear the pain. Oh, no. It's fine. It's not fine! I'm Poppy. <laughs> All right. And scene. All right, next up is Joey Jokes. That's a hard act to follow, Joey. Yeah, Joey. Now, the audience pick for you, your last dying words, is <laughs> the chimichangas are in the freezer. <laughs> And your cause of death is a paper cut. <laughs> wait, uh, as a director, you're, you're supposed to wait for me to say action? I know, I really got a paper cut, though. <laughs> <laughs> okay, go. All right, ready. Go. And, Fuck. ready, and action. Ah. Duck. Oh man, quack, quack. Ducky duck. Ah. Right, blood is pouring out now. Blood is pouring out. The paper you can't control it. What the duck? Man. All right, it hurts. Man, you can't handle the pain. It hurts. Ah, I'm not going to eat my chimichangas. Stupid chimichangas. Oh man. It's not that. Whoa. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, babe, that's going to kill me. Yeah. All right, you feel like you're gonna faint. You feel like you're gonna faint. Ooh, look at that convenient couch. <laughs> ah, man. Ooh. 
It's not supposed to be purple, is it? Oh, man, and those chimichangas, oh, they're in the freezer. Cut. <laughs> the win because I actually chose <laughs> Finally! <laughs> what is that? Got you! We're Awesome Possum. We're your local Las Vegas psychedelic folk band. Acid folk, whatever you want to call it. Crazy stuff. So we're going to get started. From your eyes, I'll tell you things.
Ladies and gentlemen, that's our show. I'd like to thank all of our guests this evening. Thank you to our cast and crew, and all you podcasts at home. Remember, you're all welcome to be a part of our live studio audience every Thursday night, 9 p.m., right here at the Inspire Theater. Party with us for the, on the rooftop for the after party. You can catch me for the after after party at the downtown cocktail room. Don't forget to subscribe to us on YouTube. Like us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter at Downtown Podcast. Thank you. Salamat, salamat. Salamat, salamat. Peace. Love. Be kind to one another. So this is to downtown Las Vegas. To our ups and downs, we gather around to sing a drinking song. A toast to those we love the most in a place where we belong. Cheers!